Last night, many of you witnessed the debate between Fetterman and Oz in Pennsylvania. And it was it was really, really bad. It was brutal to watch. It was sad. And now the clips are going viral. The prediction markets show that Pennsylvania is likely going to swing Republican. And assuming that's true, it's looking really, really bad for Democrats. In the latest Real Clear Politics projection, Republicans are expected to win 53 Senate seats and 47s will lose, dropping down to 47. Projections also show Republicans are likely going to take the House in massive numbers. But here's the bigger problem. Despite the fact there are many reasons why the Republicans are winning, the narrative is already emerging. Democrats are saying outright and their allies in the media that Donald Trump is planning to steal the midterm elections and that he's also planning on stealing the 2024 elections. At the same time, we've got reports of a truck carrying mail-in ballots bursting into flames, armed men standing outside of ballot drop boxes watching them. Many on the right are pointing to reports that in Pennsylvania, they're expecting a delay in the reporting of the results as evidence of fortification, as it was. To put it simply, both Democrats and Republicans are saying right now that if they lose, it will be because the other side cheated. Now, Democrats are taking it one step further, saying outright that Republicans are already planning on stealing and cheating in 2024. But hey, welcome to the modern state of politics. It seems that no matter which way you cut it, we are headed towards a complete collapse of confidence in our elections and institutions. So much so that I believe we're looking at, what is it, 70 or some odd lawsuits in 20 different states filed by the RNC already. Now, to Republicans, this is evidence that they're actually doing something about these procedure problems. The Democrats are saying this is cheating outright. Pick your poison. What's it going to be? I think the Democrats are dangerous. I think they're insane. I think they have uh, twisted this nation. I am no fan of them. The Republicans, I think, for the most part, consist of half neocons and a decent amount of libertarian ish and conservative American first type politicians. The MAGA Republicans are effectively their own party. But none of that really matters. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm very much in support of many of the Republicans, not all of them. But my opposition to the Democrat insanity leads me likely to support basically any Republican at this point. No, I, you look, they've got their, I've, I've got the uh, reasons to criticize them. But the end result of all of this, I mean, you look at the Fetterman debate. There are people who hate Republicans so much they would vote for a man who clearly could not communicate last night on the debate stage. It's being reported that Fetterman raised a million bucks following the debate. So here's what I see. Regardless of your position, Democrat, Republican or otherwise, Let this be a warning, I suppose, for the people standing in the middle. It feels like the only outcome to this is civil war. And I don't mean necessarily uh, uh, like the old civil war of 1861, but there's there's a lot of new articles popping up from the left talking about what to expect. And I'd like to critique them and, and, and point out the things they don't understand. But as many people think, but many people think it can't happen. And the reason is they're like, why would a state turn on state? You know, the country is very different. People don't understand how jurisdiction influences things. And they don't understand that, yeah, obviously many people have no appetite for civil war. Some on the left and the right actually do. But as most people don't, it's never, it's never that everyone's like, hey, we want war. War is thrust upon not agreed upon for the most part. I mean, often there are there's declaration of war and things like that. But typically, even when Congress does vote, for instance, for war, it's usually because we claim we are forced into it. Pearl Harbor, 9-11, the Gulf of Tonkin, albeit with that one, false flag. We wanted to enter, but we needed public support. The point is, say all you want that we will not see civil war because you don't see it in the cards or you don't see how it's possible. But one day, beat an accident, something happens. And then you end up with civil war. So I want to highlight that in this segment. Why is it that four states, I believe it was Tennessee, Arkansas, North Carolina and Virginia, they did not secede from the Union in 1860. It was only after Abraham Lincoln 
said he was going to be calling upon 75,000 men to suppress the rebellion that four states actually sided against the union. It was tyranny. There was fear. So let's talk about how something could spiral out of control with both sides basically saying both the other side is cheating. Where do we go? Before we get started, my friends, head over to TimCast.com. Become a member in order to support our work directly. As a member, you get access to the uncensored TimCast IRL Monday through Friday members only show. You'll be supporting our journalists who are writing all day about everything that's been going on. Plus, we had Elad on the ground talking to Hochul supporters in New York. If you want to support our field reporting as well, we rely on you as members, but you'll also get access to the Cast Castle vlog, Tales from the Inverted World, and many other shows. So don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Let's get started with the news on political projections. Real clear politics. We can see it right here. They're saying Nevada, Georgia, Arizona will go Republican. That to me is surprising. Because right now, 538 has AZ going, uh, Arizona going to Kelly with Masters being down in Georgia. Many people expected Walker to lose. But now, Real Clear Politics is just saying their projection is 53 seats Republican. That's massive, by the way. And I'll show you. I'll just jump right here. Take a look at this. 538. Now, I've been covering their latest pre- uh, 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 prediction models on what's going to happen in the midterms. The other day, it was 45 scenarios had Republicans winning. Now it's 46. Republicans win in 82 of 100 scenarios for the House. Here's what's really fascinating. As Real Clear Politics says, they pre- predict or projecting 53 seats for the Republicans, despite the fact that Republicans only win in 46 simulations from 538, you can see that 53 seats is the bulk of what they expect to happen. Now, there's a decent amount of projections that have landed in 51 seats for the Republicans, 52 for the Republicans, but 53 is a huge cluster. For some reason, the model being used by 538 says 53 seems like the most likely number. That's important because they're saying 46 in 100, which makes it seem like it's, a, it's, it's, it's not a great chance Republicans to win. But actually, there is a strong correlation with their projection models and a 53 seat victory. Let's jump over to the battle for the House. Now, the Real Clear Politics uh, website does not have a projection for the House. At least I don't see it up here. But so far, what they're saying, based on the current polling, 225 Republican seats, only 175 Democrat seats guaranteed, which means we have 35 seats in toss up territory. If the polls heavily skew in favor of Democrats, you know what that means? It means not only will all of these 35 toss ups go Republican, but many of these safe blue may as well. And many of the likely blue may as well. That means Democrats could theoretically have less than 775 seats. That's what they think they're going to get. We already saw with Florida and with Texas, Republicans won in traditionally blue districts. So apocalyptically bad. As we turn to the governor races, The projection is that there will be five pickups for the Republicans and two for the Democrats. Republicans will will have 31 states under uh, 31 states will be under Republican governors and 19 under Democrat governors. If the people of this country in their states go out and vote for the state representatives, considering the major polling swing. If people vote for state reps and state senators and it goes Republicans, we very well may see a convention of states. It's possible. Not guaranteed. But we're only a few states away from getting the required two thirds of states to hold a convention of states to amend the Constitution. It doesn't mean the amendment will be guaranteed. It means a constitutional convention may occur. And this is where we are. It looks like Republicans are going to blow out the Democrats with a massive and crushing defeat. Political polls. New data progress Senate polls show Rubio, Republican leading in in Florida, in Wisconsin, Johnson leading in Nevada, Laxalt uh, leading Masto. In Arizona, Kelly is tied with Masters. And in New Hampshire, Hassan is leading Bolduc by six points. So take a look at this. Real clear politics does show that New Hampshire is leaning blue, Democrat. 
But if the polls are off by seven points, as they, they appeared to be in the pre and, and, and maybe even worse in some of these elections, it's possible New Hampshire actually goes Republican. I mean, New Hampshire going Democrats really surprising to me considering the free state project. So we'll see. It could very well be 54 Republican seats. But actually, take a look at this. There's actually a scenario, according to 538, where Republicans get 50 seat, 56 seats in Congress, or maybe even 55, maybe even 54. It's possible. So we'll see. From TimCast.com, Don Bolduck within three points of New Hampshire Senator Maggie Hassan. Bolduck's support is strongest among voters between 35 and 65, with whom he polls holds the plurality of support, reports Emerson College. But we got we to see because this is aggregate polling where we saw these errors. So we don't know exactly how things are going to play out right now. We're seeing that in Florida, Rubio and DeSantis have landslide polling leads. Again, many people are expecting that to happen. And why? Let's talk about this before we get into uh, the crux of where this country goes with the lawsuits. Hokel to Zeldin on, in, the, in the debate on crime. I don't know why that's so important to you. Wow. Zeldin brought up crime over and over again. Quote, my opponent thinks that right now there's a polio emergency going on, but there's not a crime emergency. Different priorities that I'm hearing from people right now that are not being represented. Halfway through the debate, she still hasn't talked about locking anyone up, uh, committing uh, anyone committing any crimes. The governor shot back at Zeldin's assertion on crime while questioning his insistence on the topic. Anyone who commits a crime under our laws, especially with the change we made to bail, has consequences. I don't know why that's so important to you. All I know is that we can do more. That is shocking. New York gubernatorial race has shifted from a likely Democratic rating as recently as the beginning of this month to a toss up per real clear politics. Well, right now, the projection from RCP is that Hochul will win New York. But this is shocking. I just watched a video of a man get shoved onto the train tracks in New York City. There is a reason why I left, because two police officers were executed on my street. And then when I decided I'll go to the Jersey side of things, someone planted two bombs. Or I should say two bombs were planted. It may have been different parties. So that was this was years ago. I said, I am not sticking around for this. I moved down to the southern New York metro further and further away and then eventually to southern Jersey because the crime was was getting bad. I'm sitting in my apartment when a helicopter flies within some I don't know how low it was. It was ridiculously low. So so loud. I get up and I look out my window and there I see police everywhere on my street. The whole thing was locked down. I look out my window and to the right. And what do I see? Crime scene. People gathering. Two police officers had been executed in front of my house. I walked out my front door. Police told me I couldn't leave to get back inside. I waited for those cops to walk away. And then I went outside. You're not locking in my locking me in my house under false pretenses. And I began to film what was happening. In front of my house. The next day, I remember seeing my apartment police tape just blowing in the wind, ripped. And I ripped a piece off and I saved it. And I thought to myself, I shouldn't be here. It's getting crazy. It's getting crazy. Now, if I had stayed, I'd certainly be voting for Zeldin. So we'll see. But the people of, of, of New York who are remaining there because they have to or because they want to, I don't think they're going to be supporting Hochul over this. If it's a toss up, it may go to Zeldin, which would be very, very interesting. But my friends, let's go through all of the reasons. Shocking video shows the moment an SUV's windows are blown out before a brazen gunfight breaks out in broad daylight in New York City. I don't blame the guns for this. I blame the crime. These people don't think they're going to get held accountable. How about this one? New York Governor Kathy Hochul says she would do it all again when asked about firing unvaccinated health care workers after New York Supreme Court struck down mandate and said axed staff should get jobs back with back pay. These people are insane. The Supreme Court said what was done was was illegal, reinstated these people and ordered back pay. And Hochul says, I don't care. These people are tyrannical and psychotic. So where do we go from there? Joy Behar claims Dr. Oz is violating the Hippocratic Oath by going after Fetterman. Aren't you supposed to do no harm? 
you people, Democrats, want a mentally disabled man to be in office. Now, they already did it with Joe Biden, fine, but Fetterman's substantially worse. So they blame Dr. Oz for debating him? Okay, here we go. Mail-in ballots expected to delay Pennsylvania election results. So we'll see. From the Observer Reporter. Voters in Pennsylvania shouldn't hold their breath waiting for the results of close races on election night two weeks from today. It will likely take several days for the full unofficial vote totals to be released for statewide elections in many legislative races. As county officials across Pennsylvania count the volume, uh, vol, uh, voluminous, 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 I'm sorry, I can't pronounce it, number of mail-in ballots that are now pouring into elections. It's going to take a few days, Acting Secretary of Commonwealth Lee Chapman said. That doesn't mean anything bad is happening. It just means that election processes are, is pla- the election process is playing out and every vote is being counted. Wink, wink. Maybe. I don't know. Whatever. I'll tell you this. Ain't no Republican is gonna, going to accept that answer. The Constitution outright says there will be an election day, not an election month. End of story. End of story. This is cu- purely a, a constitutional violation. If you want it to change, you must change the Constitution. Amend it. But to say that unilaterally you have decided that election day will actually be election month defies the laws of this country. But of course, the Democrats don't like this country. They say the country was founded on evil principles and they would see it burn. Here we go. Pennsylvania Secretary of State reminds voters possible delays in election results are typical. Okay, you know what that means? You'll probably see the results come in saying that Dr. Oz won. And then a few days later, they'll say, actually, it was Fetterman. No Republican will accept that. I expect that we will likely see in all of these states and probably we're and and we are already seeing it. Ballot watchers. Now, I'm surprised we're only hearing it in Arizona. Where where, I'm surprised we're not hearing more about people going out in Pennsylvania and monitoring ballot drop boxes and polling locations because of this. But. Maybe they don't have the drop boxes. Maybe they're doing mail in voting, which it's a lot harder to monitor, isn't it? From the blaze, RNC vows to play offense with most litigious election cycle yet launches 73 lawsuits in 20 states. So where do you think we're going? Do you think these lawsuits are going to pan out in favor of the Republicans? We are going to see partisan judges make their play. Republican judges will likely lean Republican. Democrats will likely lean Democrat and policy procedure law. None of it's relevant. All that matters now, power. While the Republicans are filing lawsuits, they say on procedural grounds. Vanity Fair says Trump is actively plotting to steal the midterm elections and the next presidential one. Oh, okay. Per Rolling Stone, Trump has convened lawyers and advisors to scheme how to challenge the results in November if they don't go his way. Yes, despite the fact that his attempt to steal the 2020 election is reportedly under criminal investigation by the DOJ. Here's what they say. If you were actively under investigation for attempted murder, a thing you'd probably want to avoid in the meantime would be going out and trying to murder someone else. Most people understand without needing it to be explained to them why this would be a bad idea. And then there's Donald Trump. He hasn't been implicated in any murders, nor is he currently trying to kill anyone that we know of. They say, ha ha ha. He is, however, said to be actively plotting to steal the midterm elections. And the presidential one after that, which seems pretty wild, given that he's reportedly under criminal investigation. I'm sorry, man. You come to me and say you don't think there will be a civil war. And I say the remedy for procedural dispute is a lawsuit. And right now, corporate press Democrats are saying Hillary Clinton outright saying that the procedure of, of the legis- of the judicial branch, the solution to our disputes is is trying to steal the election. If Donald Trump convenes a group of lawyers to file lawsuits, that is not an attempt to steal the election. That is using the rules of the country under the Constitution to challenge things and potentially win an election. That's it. But you see where, where we're going with this? That's, that's how they're framing it. They're saying it is stealing to actually file a lawsuit. That's insane. Lawsuits are just. Lawsuits are justice. Lawsuits are the pursuit of justice. If you can't even file a lawsuit to challenge 
procedure without being accused of stealing. Well, where do you go? Where do you go? From Salon, the South lost the Civil War, but won the PR war. Propaganda and psychological warfare helped perpetuate false narratives about the Confederacy that still persist. This is a, an article of paradox, but exemplifies very well what is currently going on, published only a few days ago. I want you to take a look at that subheader. Propaganda and psychological warfare helped perpetuate false narratives about the Confederacy. Okay, false narratives. I would like to break down for you the game that is being played with all of us. I do fear civil war. I do think people need desperately to start researching the civil war because right now what I hear from most people is we can't have one like Bill Maher said, because the Mason Dixon line would go through Nana's kitchen. The Mason Dixon line was not the, the, the principal cause or function or, 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 or a, a matter in secession because a bunch of these states south of the Mason Dixon line did not secede, at least not right away. Let's talk about the paradox of the article. They start by saying the violence broke out after the losing side in a presidential election refused to accept defeat. No, we're not talking about the January 6th Capitol riots, but the American Civil War. On a basic level, the Civil War was little more or less than 11 states violently seceding from the Union after the 1816 election because they opposed the victorious candidate, Republican nominee Abraham Lincoln. Correctly or otherwise, they feared that Lincoln was an abolitionist and opponent of white supremacy, both ideals that they held to be central to their Southern identity. Despite Lincoln's repeated reassurances that he only wished to limit the expansion of slavery and would otherwise leave it untouched, the newly formed Confederate States of America waged bloody war to form their own country so they could keep slavery intact. False. Now, let's break that down. This one's important. Some of that's true. Um, slavery was a was a large component in uh, uh, in the Southern Secession, but this is seven states. What did they say? Eleven. They said it was eleven states violently seceding from the Union because they opposed Abraham Lincoln. I'll start with this from the Library of Congress. If you want to consider me to be incorrect, good leftists, I will show you just the Library of Congress in the timeline of the Civil War. The South secedes. It was, in fact, seven states. It started with South Carolina. They perceived a threat from Abraham Lincoln. They called the state convention. The delegates voted to remove the state of South Carolina from the union known as the USA. It was followed by the secession of six more states, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, and Texas. That's it. The South created a government in Montgomery, Alabama. The seven seceding, seceding states created the Confederate Constitution. Whoa, 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 whoa there, Nellie. That's only seven states. Seven states perceived a threat from the incoming Abraham Lincoln Republican administration. Not 11. So why did these other four states join in? Well, it's actually right here. The South seizes federal forts. They, they, uh, in South Carolina, they repulsed a supply ship. That was trying to reach, I, I believe it was, uh, was it Fort Sumter? Lincoln's inauguration happens after that. At Lincoln's inauguration on March 4th, the new president said he had no plans to end slavery in those states where it already existed, but he also said he would not accept secession. The attack on Fort Sumter, April 1861. When Lincoln planned to send supplies to Sumter, he alerted the state in advance. However, South Carolina feared it was a trick. Resupplying the fort meant that they would not leave. The commander, Robert Anderson, was asked to surrender, and he offered to, but only after he exhausted supplies. The South was concerned the supplies would reach him, he'd resupply, and then he'd not surrender, so they said no. The Civil War began April 12th, 1861. Shots were fired on the fort. The fort was eventually evacuated. Not a single person lost their life in the conflict. However, afterwards, in, I believe it was a, a, um, it was a salute, they were firing a cannon, someone got injured. However, following the attack on Fort Sumter, they say four more states joined the Confederacy. The attack on Fort Sumter prompted four more states to join the Confederacy with Virginia's secession. Richmond was named the Confederate capital. June 1861, West Virginia is born. 
Residents of the western counties of Virginia did not wish to secede along with the rest of the state. The section of Virginia was admitted into the Union as the state of West Virginia on June 20th, 1863. June of 1861, four slave states remained in the Union. Delaware, Kentucky, Maryland, and Missouri did not join. Although divided in their loyalties, a combination of political maneuvering and Union military pressure kept these states from seceding. Which brings us to the first battle of Bull Run. So now let us, let us address the lies that we see here in the Library of Congress, as well as from the, from the left. Eleven states didn't fear Abraham Lincoln was going to abolish slavery. Seven did. And they sought to enshrine slavery in their constitution, among other things, but very much mainly slavery. Several slave states said no. It was not the attack on Fort Sumter that resulted in these states seceding from the Union. Don't believe me? Arkansas secedes from the Union May, May 6th, 1861. They say, this is from Politico in 2017. On this day in 1861, Arkansas lawmakers voted 65 to 5 to become the ninth 11 of, of 11 southern states to join the Confederate States of America. Unlike South Carolina, Mississippi, Florida, Alabama, Georgia, Louisiana, Texas, Arkansas waited until after the Confederate attack on Fort Sumter, South Carolina, and Charleston Harbor on, uh, in Charleston Harbor on April 12th and President Abraham Lincoln's subsequent call for troops on April 15th to act. You see, the real issue here for the people of Arkansas, or at least the principal straw on the camel's back, was not slavery. It was not the fear of Abraham Lincoln. It was Abraham Lincoln calling upon 75,000 troops to suppress the Southern secession. This freaked out many states. They felt that Abraham Lincoln was overreaching. Don't believe me? Let's take it to the University of Nebraska. They say, the delegates, not a single Virginian uh, de- delegate criticized slavery. Indeed, many of the Western delegates were slaveholders and those that did not, uh, and, and those that did not spoke in support of the institution. They say this. Eventually, they got their wish. As President Abraham Lincoln called for troops from Virginia and the other states after the firing on Fort Sumter, Lincoln clearly intended to suppress secession in the South, and Virginia's delegates voted the next day, 85 to 55, to secede with the South and join the Confederacy. What you'll find in many of these states was that it was divided. In the four slave states that joined the Union, it was divided but leaned Union. In the four states that joined the Confederacy, it was divided but leaned Confederacy. The principal catalyst was Abraham Lincoln calling upon troops to suppress the Southern secession. That was true for Arkansas and Virginia, and surprise, surprise. North Carolina in the Civil War. North Carolina joined the Confederacy on May 20th, 1861, not 1860. It was the second to last state to leave the Union. And and again, this is, while seven, seven states from the Deep South seceded as a direct result of Abraham's election, North Carolina joined three other states. It was after Confederate forces fired on, on the federal garrison at Fort Sumter. They say the state's position changed dramatically after this when Lincoln called for 75,000 volunteer soldiers to crush the rebellion of the southern states that had seceded. Several states did not want to join the war. They had union sentiment. They did not want to leave the benefits of the union in the defense. But when Abraham Lincoln said, we're calling upon soldiers to go into the south and suppress, they say, said, this is too much. How about Tennessee. Tennessee, I believe, was the last. Yes. It was a divided state with the eastern counties harboring pro-union sentiment throughout the conflict. And it was the last state to officially secede from the union in protest of President Lincoln's April 15th proclamation calling for 75,000 members of state militias to suppress the rebellion explicitly described. The Civil War was principally the core issue, slavery. But why did many people fight? Most people did not fight for slavery at all. I'm talking about the North or the South. For the Southern governments in the initial seven states, they feared Abraham Lincoln was going to end slavery and that would have a big problem for their economy. But this was mostly the, the, the wealthy political elites. They weren't the ones doing the fighting for the most part. It was regular people called to fight. Why? Because the North, Abraham Lincoln called on 75,000 troops to go and shut down their independent governments. So people said no. And I've heard from many people, 
Uh, some people said that when the union, many people weren't fighting, but when the union then, you know, came into the South, all of a sudden it bolstered the, 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 the fighting. Here's the reason I bring all of this up. For one, to point out the games they play, how they put out fake news and claimed they're fighting fake news. They say the PR myths that persist to perpetuate false narratives. The whole first paragraph is a false narrative. You know, I have no illusions about what the South, uh, the Southern government seceded for these seven states. It was slavery. But the four other states that joined in, it wasn't. It was about the partly sure, but it was about Abraham Lincoln calling on these troops. And what about the four slave states that remained? Clearly, it was not slavery for them. There were a lot of deep seated political issues. From CNN, a guide to the election deniers in midterm races. Oh, Oh, are you going to talk about Stacey Abrams, Hillary Clinton? Are you going to talk about all of those people, every single Democrat who denied the 2016 election? No, they're only talking about Republicans. And there it is. That's it. This is what we're looking at. From the intelligencer, will Republicans claim victory prematurely in the midterms? So the reason I bring all of this up, it doesn't matter what people think can or will or should happen. A lot of people think there can't be a civil war. It won't happen. Let me, let me, let me make that point for you about the, uh, the Mason-Dixon line. I, don't, I wonder if I have the, uh, I think Politico, I'm not sure where the image was about, um, I don't know. I don't think I have an image showing the states that succeeded. Do I? No, I don't think so. See, the Mason-Dixon line, that was like, you know, separating slaveholding states. Maryland was a slave state. Delaware was a slave state. They joined the union. That wasn't really the core issue for the most part. Bill Maher seems to think that's a necessity. Well, let's do this. You take a look at these states right now, senators. Let's take a look at the governors. Oregon is projected to go Republican. That's crazy. Here's what I think is possible. Many people look at a state like Oregon and say, oh, see, look, they're, they're going Republican, right? Just like with many of these Southern Confederate, these, these eventually Confederate states, there may be an election. Many people may see what happens, and these states may harbor right-wing sentiments. By 2024, the Republicans may control the federal government in every branch. You will have a small number of blue states saying no. And you'll have a state like Oregon, which is pushing Republican, have sentiments in favor of not seceding or issuing declarations. But then something will happen. Sentiments will change. Donald Trump may become president. He may invoke the Insurrection Act. You may then see something like Lincoln. If Trump gets elected in 2024, come 2025, California and many other pro-abortion states or whatever, that's their moral issue. Child sex changes or something. Trump then calls on the, uh, invokes the Insurrection Act to go and suppress rebellion. Then you see moderate states that are shifting right. All of a sudden, the sentiment in the state says, no way, we're done with this. Trump's a fascist. And that's it. I don't know exactly how things will play out. But this idea that it's a deep moral issue that causes civil war is not correct. It was the principal driver. Abortion could be this time. But then are people going to say the cause of the second civil war was abortion? Or are they going to say that tribal divisions had, had, had exploded over a ton of issues, not just about abortion? That's the reality of the civil war in the United States. There was a principal moral issue and economic. And right now, there are larger issues, some bigger than others, but it really just comes down to the fact that two tribes have started to exist. They can't coexist. So a clash will occur. I suppose we'll wait and see. Right now, it looks like the Republicans are going to win in November in only a couple of weeks. The Democrats won't respond very well. It will be insane what we see over the next couple of years. But what happens when the Republicans have Congress, the Supreme Court, and the executive branch? You think the left will just simmer down? I think that's grounds for them to go even more crazy. So we'll see. Next segment is coming up at 8 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcastirl. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.